Okay, part two of the 100th video question and answer extravaganza. Um, we just had Howard and Mouse's question about showing comics exclusive to England. Very poor, I know. I just maybe you guys in the UK know more than I do about the UK comic book scene, but I really don't see uh, a great deal of exclusivity. Uh, of comic books in the UK, but hey, educate me. Um, I don't know everything. On to the next question anyway. Um, I think this was a question. I think it was more of a, one of my um, reviewer's choice, but he's, I, I'll take it as a question as well. But Super Hulk Hands, he asked, have you read Black Hole by Charles Burns? You know what? I actually haven't, and I've seen it so often on the shelves, and I've heard so many great reviews that this is uh, one of those kind of independent, really quirky type of comic books that I think I would really, really like, and I don't know why I've not picked it up yet. Uh, maybe very near in the future I will, um, I'll be purchasing that and probably doing a review of it, let's be fair. Um, let's go on to the next one. Question from Custom Brown Star. Do you think Commandy deserves his own title again? Come on. Of course he does. Commandy, the last boy on earth. Of course he does. Um, yeah, wouldn't it be great to see him again? Um, how they do it, not so sure. But still, yes. Cheating question there, Mr. Scott. Um, on to the next one, it's M-A-W-0-0-0-1. If you were on a desert island, what three comics, trades, graphic novels would you want to take with you? Okay, visual aid time again. It would be The Long Halloween, Batman. Love this. Um, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, just a cracking team. The artwork in these is just phenomenal. I have read this so many times. Love it. If I could get, I'm cheating a little bit now, but if I could get all these three in one omnibus, then most definitely, and it is the, um, the Batman Nightfall Saga. So... I just love it. It's It was a huge, huge kind of crossover deal at the time. Um, does it say, when was it originally? 1994? Early 90s. Um, but it just had everything. Every one of the Batman Rogue Gallery in there. It was just a fantastic read. So if I could get all that in one omnibus edition, then I'd take that way cheating and finally um the first trade of the sandman series preludes and nocturnes um by neil gaiman just a phenomenal series by the guy again uh, a run i go back to and back to and reread just love it Okay, next from Wasted Potential 616, he is asking me, what comic character do you feel has been mistreated or misused by Marvel DC and how the, how they can be saved? Um, ooh. Not sure how they... The two I've picked, I've picked a DC-ish and a, um, a Marvel character. And I think the only way that they really could be saved is for the companies to have more faith in the characters and um, keep titles that they're in going rather than, oh no, it's not selling very well, let's throw it out and try something else with somebody else. Um, so for DC, I'm going to say Madame Xanadu. Uh, the last run of Mad Madame Xanadu on Vertigo was just brilliant. I loved every single trade that I picked up of that. Um, but again, short-lived. Um, I can't, I think it, I don't think it lasted more than maybe 20 issues. Um, probably didn't sell that well, but very, very good comic. Um, for Marvel, I'm gonna say Silver Surfer. 
Silver Surfer had an absolutely fantastic run back in um, the 70s and since then he's been given kind of mini series thrown into maybe a little couple of events but never has had his own ongoing title anymore. Again a very interesting um, character, one that I really don't think is used to um, the full and I, w I would be there if if Marvel brought out Silver Surfer ongoing series tomorrow I'd be down in the comic book shop and I'd be buying it. So they're the two. Jean-Paul Ace Peter asked if you could make a movie based on a comic book what would it be and he said I can't do one that's already been out and he would like to see something more obscure so ooh, I decided on this elephant men now I think this is ripe for a film adaptation I think it would be CGI but done right I think this could be an absolutely awesome awesome story I mean on the back where you have the blurb reviews kind of thing it does say and this is why I think it would be an awesome awesome film Blade Runner meets Taxi Driver how cool would that film be so yes Elephant Men I'd like to see that being made into a film See, next question comes from Captain Strange Life, and one of my favourite questions I hasten to add, Mr. Strange Life. Um, I would like to know what you think of the BBC series Spaced, and if you could do review, a review of the series. Um, I don't know about a review of the series, but Spaced, probably my all time favourite comedy sitcom ish series of all time if you I, I'm not using these words derogatory in any sense but if you're a nerd if you're a geek if you're into comics if you're into cult type films and you haven't seen this you have to it's hilarious it really is just side splittingly funny and it it doesn't just touch on it, it totally immerses itself in, in our kind of geek nerdy culture. It has so many of the kind of in-jokes, it has homages to, to like all the big films, um, video games, comic books, it's all in there. I mean the main guy, Simon, um, Simon Pegg, who plays Tim, he's a comic book artist, so you've got a hook straight away there for us. It's, it's just brilliant. It's one of those series, I don't tend to listen to the commentary on, on video, on DVDs and films and like, I find them really dull and boring, but you watch this straight away, just watch it normally as if you'd watched it on the TV. You then watch it again with the commentary. You then watch it again because in this um, three disc collector's edition, I don't know if it's in any of the others, but they have what's called a homage meter. And when you watch it all again, it has um, kind of like subtitles at the bottom which tell you what scenes are being made a homage or a parody of. And it's just amazing how much that you've actually missed. Um, it's just so cleverly written. To be fair, I'm glad they haven't done another series. I'm glad they stopped at season two. And I'm sorry you guys in the USA, but I was mortified when I heard they were going to try and do an American version of it. I was like, no, no, no. Um, so, yeah spaced if you've never seen it pick this up i'm sure you could get it ridiculously cheap on um probably amazon or ebay it's brilliant uh, next one from i hope i pronounce this right asio sky 211 um he or she asked if you could have any superpower what would it be um i would like telepathy the one not just so much that I can read people's minds but I can influence them and make them do things I want them to do 
I'm so evil. But yes, telepathy. The Comic Fangirl asked me, what comic trade hardcover most surprised you? Well, Comic Fangirl, I'm sure I've shown this before, but um, there was a day, went in the comic book store, not a great pull list, so I turned to my comic book guy and said, recommend me something in a trade that's a bit different, uh, but you think I'll enjoy. And he gave me, well, he recommended me, he didn't give me them, God, I wish. Um, this, The Exterminators, again, it's a Vertigo title, by Simon Oliver and Tony Moore on the art. And it was just hilarious, creepy, funny. You think, you go, ugh. A comic book about bug exterminators, what is that all about? What, what, what kind of story are they possibly going to um, create from that? It goes to a place you would never believe. Great run, I've got, it's, let's see, one, two, three, four, it's five trades long. Uh, again, you could probably pick them up relatively cheaply on Amazon. Very highly recommended. Um, Smitty Dude asked me, what, uh, la, 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 la. I pick up a lot of random things these days, an issue here of that, a storyline here of that, but there are only a few comics I'm a stickler for. The comics in the see it, want it, got it, gotta have it, and fill in the missing gaps comics. My question to you, what are those titles for you? What comics do you not just read for average entertainment, but are uh, that special one you must have completed in your collection. I have to say, at the moment, I'm really into my Bronze Age comics, particularly anything by Jack Kirby. I am attempting and almost finished the uh, original run of New Gods. Uh, I love the horror comics of the 70s, um, the kind of House of Mystery, House of Secrets type of deal. Um, and also trying to complete the first two volumes of The Man-Thing from Marvel. Um, so yeah, those are the ones, um, anything else really from the, from the early 70s, um, I really need to pick up and I'm still entertained uh, by them, but they're just the most, fan it's one of the most fantastic and exciting um, ages of comics, I think. Um, for me personally, lots of imagination, lots of artists that seriously, and writers, that seriously influenced what we have now today. So, yeah. Crom to one, he asked me, what is your oldest comic? Um, if you'd asked me that question before I even came on YouTube, it would have probably been something really lame from the eight, well not lame, but you know, probably the 80s, early 80s, something like uh, probably Uncanny X-Men, early 200s issues, something like 208. I think that's my earliest Uncanny one. Um, when I started getting into YouTube and buying the old comics, I would have then gone, it's probably the first issue of New Gods from 1971. But a very good friend of mine on YouTube, Custom Brown Star, sent me a package and he uh, threw this in for me, which is Mandrake the Magician from 1966. Um, actually a really fun comic um, uh, from the King Comics line. Um, but yes, that would probably be my oldest comic in my collection, 1966. So there we go for that answer. Edward2962 asked a few questions. What is your favourite graphic novel or comic run you like? Um, going back to um, the question of the desert island, kind of what would I take? Um, I have to say my favourite graphic novel run is The Sandman. Um, it just grew and grew. The imagination that Neil Gaiman threw into this the, the storylines um, that he just amazingly, I don't know where he gets them from. Seriously, the guy must have taken a load of drugs um, 
back in the day. Um, I just love it. If there was, if you got rid of all my comics, um, if there was a fight, if this house was burning down and I could only save one run, it would be all my trades of the Sandman, to be honest. He also asked, random question, if the Ramones and the New York, New York Dolls and the Clash had a fist fight, who would win? I don't know. Um, can they not just like have a party, kiss and make up? Um, I'm guessing these guys don't really get on with each other at the time or still, I don't know. I mean, I've heard of them. The Clash, I'd listen to occasionally. I'm not really familiar with the Ramones or New York Dolls music. You probably hate me now, but that's just the kind of guy I am. Um, his final question was, how do you think the Marvel Ultimate relaunch stacks up against the DC relaunch? Um, I think that's a no-brainer, really. And I guess it's kind of unfortunate that um, Marvel Ultimates brought these comics out at the time that DC did its relaunch, because I think it's been pretty much forgotten about. Um, I think they wanted one hell of a hype um, on, you know, Spider-Man being black now, but... I think that's been very overshadowed by the DC relaunch. Um, the Ultimate X-Men, while was a serviceable title, and I'm still going to see how it goes, I don't think it was anything amazing. Um, those two are the only ones I really know about. Um, I know there's the, ult is it the Ultimates, but I, I seriously think it it's poor timing by Marvel to bring out these ultimates I don't think they were ever going to get a real solid look in with the um, with the DC relaunch on the go so I think DC pretty much smacked Marvel ultimates ass there okay the Captain Cummings and his fellow co-presenter Dr Rockstar they want to know um, which Spider-Man story arc is your absolute favourite ooh um, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to give you three. Um, Return of the Sinister Six. You've got some of the top um, of Spider-Man's kind of villainous rogues gallery all coming together to uh, knock down um, Spider-Man Peter Parker. Um, I actually really enjoyed... Um, Mark Miller's run on the Spider-Man title from Marvel Knights. Um, I know they're kind of three separate storylines, but they're kind of one overreaching. But the first 12 issues by Mark Miller, great. Love them. And just to throw in the end, Secret Wars. Spider-Man's involvement in that. And of course, you have the creation of the black costume. So there we go. Mr. McBlahBlah asked me, if you were to design a comic book, which subscriber would be the superhero and who would be his sidekick? The sidekick can be anybody at all, subscriber or actual superhero. Okay, um, the superhero would be, I mean, he's got a superhero name already. It's Mr. Supercalo. Yes, Mr. Supercalo, you're my superhero comic book. And... Just for shits and giggles, let's put Custom Brom Star as his sidekick. That would be hilarious. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. Comic Man asks me if you had to choose to live in either the Marvel Universe or the DC Universe, which would you choose? To be honest, right now I think I'd be safer in the Marvel Universe, given the bloody violent nature of DC at the moment. So I'm going to go with the Marvel Universe there. Almost at the end now, Mr. Supercalo himself threw in a, a few questions. I'm sorry, but your first question, I, I just couldn't answer. Which fictional character do you most closely identify with? I seriously, I racked my brain for days and days trying to answer this question, but I'm sorry, dude. I don't know. Um, he asked me, what is your favourite video upload? Um, I'm presuming he means of mine. Um, or am I being really kind of vain there? I don't know. But I, I, I really did enjoy doing my 100th video. Um, that was a whole lot of fun. Um, I've got some, f hopefully, fun 
videos coming up so um, stay tuned for that. What is the biggest crime committed by other comic vloggers aka your YouTube pet peeve? Oh, I'm gonna say it and I know so many of you do it um, and I would never want you to stop I'm not telling you what to do but what really really <laughs> annoys me is unboxing videos oh my good lord <laughs> I'm sorry I really don't want to see you opening a box I'm only interested what's inside so yeah that is my biggest pet peeve especially the ones that hold the camera and try and open a package at the same time what's the point that really gets on my nerves but you're all still going to do it, so what does it matter? Oh, as long as you get to the good stuff at the end. Now, this final question was, what one comic would you like to see turned into a movie? Um, fables. I know there's a couple of TV programmes that are kind of starting very soon that are of that kind of ilk, but I want to see a proper full-on with the Fables characters movie. Um, penultimate question from Mystic White Guy. What is your favourite comic to collect? Um, I guess it would have to be Fables again. And um, at the moment, Amazing Spider-Man. Both titles, amazing. Very, both very different. Both very fun, very entertaining. Great storylines going on. And finally, Enskade7522. How's that for a pronunciation? He asked me, what's the most awesome book you have on your shelf? Well, oh, it's a heavy one. This bad boy. Yes, it's the, um, the Tashin 75 Years of DC Comics, The Art of Modern Myth Making. This is an absolutely awesome fantastic book um, it is basically obviously the history of DC Comics for the last 75 years uh, it goes right from the beginning um, I have pages marked in here and I don't even think it was for this video but you know you have awesome uh, reprints of like you get those action comics number one um, got detective comics number one what else have I bookmarked in here? And there's fun comics with uh, the spectre on there. Let's get the glare out of the way. And uh, it just, it's, there's a, an old house of mystery. And what's that mask? Oh, what have we got here? Oh, yes. Um, picture of book burnings throwing um, the comic books in from the crazy 50s PC political correctness. Oh, my God, we're destroying our kids' minds with comic books. Um, a very sad time of um, comic book history. But it is just the most amazing book. Um, it's, it's expensive, guys. Fortunately, I had this um, given to me as a present, so I didn't have to pay for it. And you know what, guys? That is it. I've loved doing and answering your questions. Um, tune in tomorrow where you will find out who has won the stack of comics. Again, if this is your first time here, there's a subscription button up there. Comments down there. Thumbs up. Enjoy. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.